It's my honor, real honor, and privilege to endorse Mitt Romney. <laughs> Mitt is tough. He's smart. He's sharp. He's not going to allow bad things to continue to happen to this country that we all love. So, Governor Romney, go out and get him. You can do it. Okay, well, that was uh, Donald Trump. He was the one that was talking, and he was talking about Mitt Romney, who was basically not talking. Uh, we're back with more of the news up here. Bob O'Brien continues with me, and we're going to go to Neil King with the Wall Street Journal, who's going to tell us a bit more about this. Um, you, Neil, you're in Las Vegas. What's been going on with Donald Trump? He has, um, there's been some confusion about who he's endorsed. Um, tell us about that and bring us up to date. Well, you know, yesterday it, 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 the news came out that he was going to fly out here to Vegas and go to the Trump International Hotel and Tower. Um, and everyone started trying to figure out who he was going to endorse or what he was going to do. And some folks in Gingrich land uh, said that they were under the firm understanding that he was going to endorse Newt Gingrich. Uh, various of us you know, posted things online last night. And then the word comes out this morning that, no, indeed, he's actually endorsing Mitt Romney, which is what he did in a rather awkward uh, ceremony or a moment that you just flashed. And this happened, you know, half an hour ago. And, the, uh, you know, six months ago, perhaps this would have been a little more, and I'm going to use a word I hate using, impactful. Uh, is Donald Trump's endorsement, you know, you know, is this a, uh, is this a, you know, a buffalo nickel right now? You know, it's a funny thing. There was a great moment when Romney actually came out. It was the whole thing was very awkward. You could tell that was, Romney kind of looked like he was eating lemons or something. And he said, <laughs> uh, there are some things you just can't imagine happening in your life. And this is one of them. Um, and, it, you know, I think in some ways he was glad to have this come his way. It, and he deprived Gingrich of some kind of fun attention on a day like today. And also the sense that a lot of the more kind of fire breather types of the uh, sides of the Republican Party have been more and more gravitating to Gingrich. And I think um, it takes that element away from uh, Gingrich and brings it over to the Romney side, which doesn't hurt. I mean, there are other things that I think that Romney is a little reluctant to be, you know, hitching his uh, cart to Donald Trump's. I mean, for one, Trump is somebody who's known for the line, you know, you're fired. And what? Romney himself has come under some fire in his own right for uh, acting as if he likes firing people. Um, well, so well, that'll, that's, that'll a, very, a very good point. And, uh, and luckily that word was not used. But let's hear what uh, Mitt Romney said in reaction to this. There, there are some things that you just can't imagine happening in your life. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, <laughs> being in uh, Donald Trump's magnificent hotel and having his endorsement is a, a delight. I'm, I'm so honored and, uh, and pleased to have his endorsement. And of course, I'm looking for the endorsement of the people of Nevada. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, Mitt Romney accepting that endorsement from Donald Trump and, and Neil he doesn't seem very comfortable does he? He, he I mean I've seen him a lot more comfortable when he was getting grilled by uh, by our people yeah I mean there was a great moment you know Trump spoke for like all of a couple of minutes I think he was under firm orders to keep it in check you know Donald Trump is a guy who can talk uh, quite uh, uh, you know aggressively for quite a long time and at one point he turned to the Romneys and he said, as an aside, and they are a great couple, aren't they? Basically, like meaning great looking couple and isn't she a doll? And uh, you could tell that Romney himself was kind of wincing over that one. So I think they really wanted to keep it as short as possible. Romney very quickly, after the clip you just showed, turned it into a conventional kind of abbreviated stump speech, mainly talking about um, this state, Nevada, and some of its problems, and, and then they all moved on from there. And Neil, is there, you know, who's kind of left out there in the pantheon of GOP stars uh, who can, you know, throw some support? I mean, obviously, you know, uh, Newt Gingrich wants Rick Santorum to drop out of the race. Uh, Ron Paul, perhaps, could throw his weight behind uh, people. But, it, you know, aside from the four candidates, who's left out there that can really make an impact on the, uh, on, the, on the outcome of this race? You know, I think it's funny because Sarah Palin has been 
strangely or not so strangely, I should say, typically kind of flirting around the edges on this and saying various things positively uh, about Newt Gingrich. I think if she decided to come out on the trail and be with him at a key time, campaign alongside him, I think that's the kind of thing that could make a difference for Gingrich. Um, there aren't really a lot of kind of big traditional names left. I mean, everybody was waiting for Jeb Bush to maybe make a move in Florida. Um, you know, there, are, there aren't necessarily a lot of those out there. And, you know, by and large, endorsements are, are worth a, a day's news story, and then they kind of move on, unless people are really willing, as Chris Christie has been, uh, for Mitt Romney and others to really sort of stand by their side and, and take shots at uh, opponents with the kind of frequency that Chris Christie has been doing, going after Newt Gingrich. Okay, look at the, the you know, Neil has used some variation of the word strange, four times in this interview. Neil, you've been doing this for a while. I, it's pretty, I, this is a wacky campaign, isn't it? It's okay, this you is can a say very, it. Yeah, this is a very wacky campaign. And it's so wacky that I'm quite convinced that despite the feeling that's now come over people, that Mitt Romney has this air of inevitability again, I still think there's some twists and turns uh, down the road. Hard to predict exactly what they are, but you know, I, I also think others are going to still rise up. Maybe Rick Santorum will have another moment. Who knows? But even on Saturday, it could have. We could see some interesting results here out of Nevada if Ron Paul manages to come on strong. So I yeah. don't think this is over. Yeah, and, and and Ron Paul of course does well in caucuses just because of the way his organization is is run. Um, what what about past um, Republican presidents? What what about a uh, a nod from George H. W. Bush uh, for one of the candidates? Roy is that w. like himself? Uh, yeah, or W. himself? Um, would would one of would one or two of those make a difference? Do you think with uh, the hardcore Republicans? You know, in a way, I mean, George uh, W. Bush, you know, of course, left in some disrepute and isn't widely, you know, loved uh, nationwide, though I think he's come into better standing than when he was in the White House. Um, that would make a difference, I think, definitely among the uh, Republican stronghold. H. W. Bush, his father, who's actually in pretty bad shape uh, physically, he's really not able to walk all that well. and that's not talked about all that widely. There's no way that he would go out on the campaign trail or anything like that. He's already sort of tacitly endorsed Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney went by his house when he was in Houston a couple of months ago, and the pictures went out around the country of that encounter. And I think that was really kind of meant as a quiet gesture in that regard. Um, but yeah, I think those two, if they were to really be alongside him one way or the other, that, that would make a difference.